Apple Intelligence was just announced offering AI features for iPhones, iPads, and Apple Silicon Macs only about a week before the launch of Microsoft's new Copilot Plus PCs with a bunch of new AI. So in this video, I'm gonna dive deep into the differences to essentially find out who has the better AI. First off, the benefit for Copilot Plus PCs is that you have a ton of different options to choose from, including various brands and chips that are all required to have at least 40 tops of NPU performance compared to Apple's M4 chip that only has 38 tops. The first Copilot Plus chip is the Snapdragon X Elite, which I'm personally super excited to test out when it launches on June 18th, so keep in mind that this video is examining the features and differences of these AI systems themselves, since I obviously can't test the machines out yet. Now the biggest benefit for Apple Intelligence is that it'll be supported on every Apple Silicon Mac, including the M1, released way back in 2020, so you don't have to buy a brand new PC like you do if you want Copilot Plus AI features. Another big advantage of Apple Intelligence is when you update your software to the new macOS Sequoia, it'll automatically support all of the personal context features like searching for specific photos or files on your Mac with the new AI Siri, which now has on-screen awareness to help it understand what you wanna do. Copilot Plus has a similar feature called Recall, which is pretty cool because you can see the history of every app you use in case you forgot something but of course it'll only begin to work when you actually purchase and start using your new Copilot Plus laptop since it works by literally taking an encrypted screenshot of whatever is on your display every few seconds and storing it, even including passwords and financial account information. And if that sounds a bit sketchy to you, you're not alone. But before I dig into the security and privacy concerns with Copilot Plus's new recall feature and compare that to how Apple Intelligence works, I want to go through some of the AI features of both of them to see which AI seems more useful. First up, Apple Intelligence has this really cool feature called Genmoji, where you can generate completely unique emojis on the fly by simply typing in what you want, like a T-Rex wearing a tutu on a surfboard or a squirrel DJ, and then you can share those with friends or anywhere else system-wide. There's also the Image Playground feature, which lets you generate cartoonish images instead, like a chef cat, within multiple apps like Messages or the dedicated Image Playground app. It also lets you experiment with different styles and even create images of your contacts, which I'd say is the coolest part about it. And going even further, the Image Wand can convert sketches you make into generated images that match your sketch. On the Copilot Plus side, they have a very similar feature called Paint Co-Creator, which can generate an image based on your text and it can also automatically update as you sketch, which is also pretty cool. It also has the Restyle app, which lets you see your generated image in various styles, but it doesn't integrate as well as Apple's AI, which is available across multiple apps, including messages for easy texting and easy sharing on social social media. Copilot Plus does have some really cool video call features, including creative filters and Windows Studio effects, which uses AI to brighten up your face or the background, depending on the lighting as well as others. On top of that, it supports live captions, which not only gives you on-text captions for every bit of audio that comes through your device, but it also can auto-translate 40 plus languages into English captions in real time, which is really cool. This is something that Apple Intelligence doesn't have, but what it does have is auto transcriptions for audio recordings, including summaries. And Apple added the cleanup tool in the Photos app, which can remove people and objects from the background. Apple's AI also automatically prioritizes notifications and emails, and there's a new focus mode that will reduce interruptions and only show you the ones that seem the most important. Apple also has their writing tools 
symbols, which can generate text, proofread it for mistakes, and rewrite it to sound more friendly, professional, or concise, and it can also summarize or make tables and lists. And of course, the new redesigned Siri can help you with various tasks system-wide, which is really nice. Now on the Copilot Plus side, the new PCs actually do not include any AI writing tools in the box for free. I looked into it, and you apparently need Microsoft Copilot Pro, which is $20 a month to enable Copilot in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and Outlook for emails. And that $20 a month is apparently on top of the monthly subscription you already have to pay for to get those apps with Microsoft 365. And keep in mind that Apple is giving you all of their Apple intelligence features, including writing tools for free. And now let's get into the final and by far the most important thing to compare in terms of AI, which is privacy. As soon as Copilot Plus was revealed, the recall feature instantly raised security and privacy concerns with multiple critics like Molly White calling it spyware, Malwarebytes calling it a built-in keylogger, and an ex-Microsoft security expert calling it a disaster and a hacker's dream because apparently he discovered that it saves everything, including Google Chrome's private mode, and it even saved deleted emails and messages within apps like WhatsApp. A quote, ethical hacker Alex Hagenau launched a tool called Total Recall that shows how anyone with enough know-how and the right tools could steal the recalls since apparently he analyzed it and found that the data is stored completely unencrypted on the computer. So if a hacker gains remote access to your PC, they have access to all of your recall data. And the very next day after that, Microsoft released released an updated blog on the recall feature, responding to the criticism with a couple of updates, including turning recall off by default and requiring Windows Hello to enable recall and authenticate it every time you want to access your recall history. I guess that shows their confidence in their own recall feature. And the big problem is that many unsuspecting consumers usually just press yes on every page while while setting up their PCs, even if they never plan on actually using Recall, which sucks since Recall actually eats into your storage, allocating up to 50 gigabytes of SSD space for the snapshots. Hey guys, Vadim from the future here. It turns out that Microsoft is actually delaying the Recall feature pretty much indefinitely, they're saying it's going into beta in the coming weeks, so it could be months before Recall is actually out due to all of the drama and the security concerns. So, well, I guess that was that. Now, pivoting over to how Apple Intelligence works with Siri 2.0, it's the complete opposite because it works in real time on device to fulfill a Siri request and then erases the output data every time and all of your personal data is fully end-to-end -end encrypted on device within the secure enclave, which even Apple can't access. Now, the biggest piece of controversy came from Elon Musk, who claimed that Apple's integration of ChatGPT means that OpenAI can essentially siphon all of your data off your Apple device. He even said it's absurd that Apple isn't smart enough to make their own AI, so they're handing your data over to OpenAI and selling you down the river. Well, that claim is completely false because first of all, ChatGPT is the third and last resort in Apple Intelligence's hierarchy system, where the first step is to always use on-device AI processing with the NPU first, and if it needs more processing power, the second step is to send it to Apple's own custom private cloud compute servers, which are built using custom Apple Silicon chips, not NVIDIA GPUs, and the servers run on a brand new custom OS, 
which has been stripped of persistent storage capabilities and the remote shell, making it impossible to access remotely. It even has multiple enforceable guarantees, like erasing any and all potential storage mediums every time the secure enclave reboots. And best of all, Apple is making every single build of their private cloud compute OS software available to the public for security research, just in case you don't wanna take Apple's word for it. And going back to how ChatGPT is integrated, once again, is the third and last resort, and it actually asks you every single time if you want to share your data with ChatGPT to process your request, with it sharing the specific parts of data only and nothing more. But going even deeper, Apple actually did create and train their own AI, with language models that are extremely competitive, beating out most models out there and being just barely behind ChatGPT4 Turbo in terms of accuracy. Now, Copilot Plus's AI runs on Microsoft's Phi Silica small language model, which is a smaller 3.3 billion parameter derivative of Phi 3 Mini, which has 3.8 billion parameters, so it's meant to be small enough to run on NPUs with 40 plus tops. Apple actually compared and tested the larger Phi 3 Mini model to their very own Apple Intelligence small language model, which runs on device, and it beat it out in basically every single test, including human satisfaction in email and notification results, instruction and prompt level accuracy, human preference for safety prompts, and it has a much lower violation rate of 8.2% compared to 22.8% on Phi 3 Mini. And keep in mind that the Phi Silica model that's running on Copilot Plus PCs is a smaller 3.3 billion parameter model, so it'll perform even worse. So based on the number of unique features, the model performance, and especially security and privacy, I personally believe that Apple's intelligence is better than the Copilot Plus plus AI, but it's all gonna depend on how the laptops actually work in real life. So definitely get subscribed for those videos and check out that video right there for a deep dive on Apple intelligence and how it works. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.